All right, guys, we're here. We're finally playing Rogue, and I've put together what I think is the fastest speed-clearing Nightmare Dungeon Rogue that you have in Diablo 4. That's going to be the Shadow Explosion, the Shadow Twisting Blades Rogue. We are insanely fast, have almost unlimited, unstoppable, and we just duck and weave through all of our monsters exploding them with all of our shadow damage this build is insanely fast insanely strong and with the help of the barber we clearing monsters 20 25 30 levels higher than us no problem so in today's video i'm going to break down all the gear the skills and the paragon you need for this build to get you all the way to nightmare dungeon level 100 let's do it all right, guys, we're back with our Shadow Blades Rogue or Shadow Twisting Blades Rogue. I know a lot of you guys have all seen Twisting Blades throughout all of Diablo 4, and it's the most popular build, but I'm bringing you this one. I wanted to be as fast as I possibly could. I wanted to outspeed Necromancers uh, with Blood Mist. I wanted to outspeed Druids with... Um, tempest roar and then just all the speed increases with grizzly rage and this build i think has the fastest clear speed as well as just the overall fastest normal move speed in the game so i'm going to break down everything that you guys need as well as just the gear and everything to go with it all right so let's start off with the skill tree of course we all know twisting blades so a lot of this isn't going to change too much but i'm going to go over it if you just in case if you guys aren't aren't know this is for new and experienced uh, players in Diablo 4. This build is going to work as a leveling build as well as all the way up into the end game. Uh, so we're starting off with Puncture all the way into Fundamental Puncture. This is going to throw three blades. This is what's going to help us uh, generate some vulnerability, which is really going to do the most damage for us. Next, we're going to come down into Core Skills and we're going to max out Twisting Blades. And yes, we're doing Advanced Twisting Blades. The reason for this is even though the nerf came to Advanced Twisted Blades, the cooldown has been reduced. That's the nerf, but it still really helps us to be able to keep our imbuement up as much as possible, as well as our other cooldowns. Then, of course, we're doing three points into sturdy for some damage reduction. Uh, we're going to be up close and personal, so we need to be able to take some hits. Uh, siphoning strikes, even though this was nerfed, I have three points into this just to get some health back. We crit all the time, so this is really going to help us. Then we're going to come down to agility skills. We're taking Shadow Step. This is going to be our first of two unstoppable. And we're doing Methodical. This is going to help us stun the enemy that we're Shadow Stepping to. Um, you could do Shadow Step cooldown. However, the stun for more crowd control is just better. Then we're taking only one point in dash. This is all we need. Even though we dash through, if you really wanted to, you could take a point on a siphoning strike and do enhanced dash so that way enemies that are hit get the additional uh, crit damage from us. This, this is kind of like, you don't really see the biggest. We're already destroying mobs anyway, so it's not necessary. Then, of course, we're taking three points into weapon mastery and we're wielding daggers. I often get asked about daggers versus swords. Uh, I think daggers are better just for attack speed as well as the increased damage against healthy enemies on the surface. So that way, when they do explode, we just do, we're just able to just like finish off the rest of their health bar. However, swords are just as good because it's just flat damage. But I like the increased damage to healthy enemies. We're taking three points into concussive for knocking down an enemy or knocking them back. Back we get a crit strike chance. A lot of this comes from being able to stun them. Then we're doing try attacks when we critically strike a dazed enemy, which is with our shadow step here. We're going to knock them down for 0.5 seconds. Then we're going to come down to our sub skills where this is taking concealment. This is going to be our second form of unstoppable, guys. This is going to give us unstoppable. We're going to gain 40 energy when we enter concealment, which is going to allow us to keep twisting blades. And then we're doing subverting stealth. So a skill that breaks concealment is going to make the enemy vulnerable. Uh, we don't necessarily need the critical strike because we're just going to be hitting them with a blade. I'd rather have the enemy vulnerable. And this also really helps us against bosses. Uh, we're taking three points into exploit for more damage. And then we're taking three points into malice. And then we have six points here because we have three into our amulet for even more damage against vulnerable enemies. A perfect amulet would be three more points into weapon master. We don't have that yet. We have one that might be able to do it, but... If you get three points into Exploit, Malice, or Weapon Master, then I think you're pretty good based on your amulet. Then we're going to come down to Imbuement Skills. We're taking five full points into Shadow Imbuement here because we're going to be exploding absolutely everything into Blended Shadow Imbuement. Besides Puncture, there's not really too many other ways to make enemies vulnerable. Um, so Concealment helps with this a lot. And then our Shadow Imbuement blowing all the enemies up makes them vulnerable, which is going to allow us to do our maximum amount of damage. So we're taking that. One point into Shadow Crush, 
And then three points in a consuming shadow. Each time we kill an enemy with shadow damage, we generate 30 energy. This is absolutely busted. That means that with our current 100 energy, all we got to do is just blow up three enemies. And then we get all of our energy back to just keep twisting blading. It's kind of broken. Then we got three points in precision imbuement for crit chance while imbued skills are there. Then we're going to come down to ultimates. We're not taking any, but we're doing three points into intervention for more chance to gain energy. Uh, one into an adrenaline rush, and then three into haste for that increased move speed. Our key passive of choice is going to be momentum, hitting a dazed or frozen enemy, uh, hitting an enemy from behind, and then what we have stacks, we get increased damage reduction, energy regen, and move speed. So we are very, very, very fast. So now let's go over the gear, guys, because I know you're very um, curious to see about this. And we have a couple gear choices that are going to swap out. Uh, let me first say that this build does not require any uniques. I do have one, and I have a second one here for both the daggers, but it does not require it. However, it will help a lot. So, starting off in our helmet, we're doing cheats. This is going to allow us to take 20% uh, less damage from crowd-controlled enemies. Whenever we get hit by one, we gain move speed. However, you can swap this out for a protection. Okay, damaging an elite grants you a barrier. I have a max barrier here. Uh, for 10 seconds and as as fast as we're moving around the map this is very good to go from elite to elite by getting all of the additional shield there to help keep us alive make us more tanky and it's actually really good against bosses so i've tested it with both um i think i like barrier a lot more than actual cheats but cheats is actually pretty good because 20 percent less damage isn't bad now don't mistake this this is not damage reduction but it is very good in our chest piece we're doing mangulars on the lucky hit Dealing direct damage to vulnerable enemies dazes them. This is our other form of daze. Pretty strong. Edge Masters here. While we have uh, max energy, we do even more damage. Um, this is good. However, you could probably swap um, Edge Masters out. Uh, depending on the particular weapon loadout that we're going to do, you could probably swap Edge Masters out for something else. But right now, I'm testing it. It's pretty strong. Disobedience, of course, for more armor. Now, in the boots, I have Ghost Walkers. Okay. I like speed. There's a few options here. You can do Wind Striker. Uh, wind Striker on crits, you get more move speed. Very good. And then the other one is, uh, I don't think it's in here. It's not the Umbral. Uh, there's another one in here to where uh, your Shadow Step gets a second um, trigger. So you're able to attack with this twice. And then you deal more damage with it. You're not necessarily using it for the damage. You just want it for the second um trigger to be able to go unstoppable two times instead of just one however with ghost walkers while unstoppable in four seconds after we have the increased move speed and more importantly we meet we move freely through the enemies so with shadow step as well as concealment and with how fast we reset our cooldowns we have almost a permanent 22 percent increased move speed and we are just all over the place as you guys have seen in the gameplay very strong suggestion there uh, blade dancers, of course, uh, in our weapon for max twisting blades. All of our damage comes from our daggers anyway, but we have max damage here. Uh, in our amulet, we're doing corruption. Our imbuement skill effects have a 60% increased potency versus vulnerable enemies. Everything is going to be vulnerable, so shadow damage from our shadow imbuement is just going to explode at an even higher rate. Next, we have ravenous. This is just the basic one from the codex. I'm really still trying to find a max one for 70% energy regen, but 50% is pretty good after killing an enemy. It helps keeps our, keep our energy full, very strong. And then of course, a ring of the umbral. I do have a max one, but three is just fine. So every time we, uh, we restore our primary resource, when, we, uh, when you crowd control an enemy, we're always dazing and hitting people. So the crowd control is insane. So our resource energy regen is really high. Now it comes down to our weapons here, okay? So starting off here, we have two different daggers. One dagger that I have really liked is accelerating. So crit strikes, which we always get, we get increased attack speed. Now, if you wanted to, you could have another normal dagger here. And what you could do is you could do, um, you could put edge masters here and then put another offensive ability here if you weren't having either one of the uniques. Okay, so you have a few options there when it comes to that. Um, so there, there's a few other ways that you could do it, but I think edge masters is fine. Now, uh, if you do have either one of these uniques, they both work really, really well. I've tested both. So first you have, uh, as heroes, 
I'm, I'm going to butcher this. I don't want you guys to butcher this. But we have this dagger here. Hitting uh, hits with this weapon increase your attack speed. So this combined with our accelerating, we attack insanely fast. We attack so fast with this when we're hitting enemies. It's kind of insane. Okay, so this allows us to get our combo points here really quickly. And then we um, twisting blades to do a lot of damage. Our other option here is condemn condemnation or condemnation where our core skills deal increased damage when spending three combo points your basic skills using this weapon have a 30 percent chance to fill so that means every single time that we attack we get a chance to fill this up instantly and then we just twisting blades and then we get 40 percent increased damage now we do lack a little bit of attack speed with this particular combo. You could also, if you had both, you could just rock both. And that is perfectly fine. And you just sacrifice the crit chance attack speed. This is super strong if you have both. Uh, but I have found I still like accelerating for the, the, the additional attack speed. So if you don't, again, guys, I would probably just run Edge Masters in here and then just rock another offensive power. Um, you have plenty of options here that could really work. Um, it just depends on really what you want to do with the build. You have some uh, wiggle room there. Now, what I've decided to continue running is probably this combo here because I like the lucky hit chance increase. However, the additional damage that we have against bosses is really strong with this. So probably when I go fight a boss, I would just swap this out and do this just to have it against the boss. Okay, so now let's get over to the Paragon board. As you guys have already seen some of the gameplay, it's kind of insane. Now, the Paragon board, we have uh, changed a few things on, and I really, really like this. So, we're going to go up to the right-hand side. We're taking Prime for more damage in life. Our node is going to be controlled for against crowd control enemies. We're dazing everybody um, or slowing them, which is really good. We're taking both Skillful as well as Lawless with the corresponding nodes on the left side. In our second, uh, we actually don't need these points here. I do not need those points. I got two extra points. Sweet. I'm going to put those in at the end. Our second board, we're going to be taking Tricks of the Trade. Uh, we're not actually using this, but we're going to have this board here with the glyph on the right. We're going to come up and we're going to take Havoc with all corresponding nodes for more physical damage and crit damage. Then we're taking Focus for more damage against Elites and Cutthroat damage with corresponding nodes. Our glyph of choice is going to be Closer. Twisting Blades as well uh, is a Cutthroat skill, so we get all the damage there and we get some damage reduction. Then we're going to be taking uh, Lawless for more armor and dex. We're going to come up and take Brawler for more damage against close enemies as well as damage reduction with corresponding nodes. Our third board is going to be Exploit Weakness, which we're not actually taking. However, you could take this and it would be fine, but I have found that I don't necessarily need this. We're already dealing an insane amount of damage against monsters that are almost 30 levels higher than us. First, we're going to come up to the left-hand side to grab Hunter Killer for more move speed and damage against elites with corresponding nodes. We're going to come in. Our Glyph of Choice is going to be Combat for more crit damage as well as the, crit the skills that critically strike restore our energy cost, which is awesome. It keeps our, our energy full. Uh, we're taking Artifi Artifice uh, for more vulnerable damage with nodes. We're taking Dosage for more healing, uh, mainly just for the decks. Uh, we're going to come up and we're going to take Exploit for more vulnerable damage and damage against injured enemies with corresponding nodes. We could actually take this one. However, you don't necessarily need it. Our fourth board at the moment is going to be No Witness. We're not taking this. We currently have no legendary nodes yet, but uh, and the build is just working just fine. So maybe we'll have one here late, you know, shortly. We'll see. First, we're going to be taking Ruin for more damage against healthy enemies as well as crit damage. Then we're taking Knowledge for more damage and intelligence. Our Glyph of Choice is going to be Turf. This is going to be our close damage dealer. More damage to close enemies and damage reduction. Very important. We're going to end up taking training for more max life and dex. And then we're going to come down here for uh, for our next uh, board. But that is the board, guys. This is our Shadow Blades build. We are insanely fast. We deal a crap ton of damage. And we absolutely explode everything. You can see that we just explode everything. No problem. Now, our specialization, because this is where it gets tricky, you can run Inner Sight. Okay, you can run this, which really does help out with your edge masters when it triggers, especially against bosses, because then you get that full 20% increased damage always for four seconds. Very strong. However, our hearts of choice, our malignant hearts, our brutal one is suppressing incoming damage. And when we use a defensive or sub skill or max skill, 
we explode that damage. The only one this that, that really triggers, triggers on is our concealment, because everything else is an agility, so we don't really have it. It's only this. So it's a nice little extra damage. You don't necessarily need it. You could swap it out if you really wanted to. Uh, and then for our other Vicious Heart, we're doing every five seconds while above 60% life. Our skills cost more, so Twisting Blades cost more, but we deal more damage, which is which is huge. We deal 22% increased damage, which is really strong. And then, of course, our Wrathful Heart is the Barber. Now, with the way that the Barber works by absorbing damage, it makes it really hard to use Inner Sight because it doesn't necessarily trigger this very well. And I, to me, I really enjoy the combo points more because we do even more damage. As you can see, like with Twisting Blades, the, con the combo point damage, we do almost double it. So we actually, we actually go up from 12,335 to 23,000 and we get more movement, which is really, really strong. So not only are we much faster, but we're doing so much more damage. And then if you want to swap this out and run condemnation you can get the chance to fill those up however even doing this you fill up the combo points insanely fast so as you can see for our combo points we already fill them up really really fast so if we swap to condemnation and then we just use this you can see that like we already fill it up you see it, it fills up again filled up again instantly so getting the combo points for the additional damage is actually really, really easy with the increased speed or just using this. Again, if you don't have either dagger, just get another dagger put Edge Masters on here and then I 100% suggest having Accelerating. You could probably even do Rapid in this build. So put uh, Edge Masters down here and then do Rapid for the increased basic attack speed, which would be our Puncture to help get our combo points up. So you could definitely do that. So to me, I think combo points is the clear winner. However, inner sight is just as good. Um, so yeah, guys, that is our shadow imbuement or our shadow blades build. We are insanely fast and we do a crap ton of damage. So like the video, comment down below. Tell me what your thoughts are. The build link for this will be uh, in the description over on our Mobiletics profile. So big shout out to Mobiletics and our partnership with them. So go check out all my builds over there. And as always, guys, stay gaming and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.